Hello everyone and welcome back to Smart Farm Insight. Sugar, a simple white crystal that sweetens our tea coffee and desserts hides an extraordinary story. Behind every spoonful lies an incredible journey that begins in the warm, fertile fields of the southern United States and ends in high-tech factories where sugar is refined into its purest form. In this episode, we'll explore how sugar is made from sugar cane, one of the world's oldest cultivated crops. You'll see how American farmers in states like Louisiana, Florida, and Texas use science machinery and perseverance to produce millions of tons of sugar each year. Let's step into the heart of the cane fields. Sugar cane thrives in hot, humid climates with plenty of sunshine, which is why the majority of U.S. production happens in Louisiana and Florida. Each year, the planting season begins in early spring. Instead of using seeds, sugarcane is propagated by cutting mature stalks into segments about 12 to 18 inches long. Each piece contains several buds, the tiny growing points that will sprout into new plants. Before these canes reach the field, scientists and agricultural experts spend months researching the best varieties to plant. Within a few weeks, the first green shoots appear marking the beginning of a new crop cycle. Each one-year cycle will transform these small sprouts into towering stalks more than three meters tall, storing valuable sugar inside. After planting, the sugar cane enters a long period of growth and maintenance. Farmers must carefully manage water nutrients and weed control to ensure healthy crops and high yields. Sugarcane is a water-intensive crop. Each plant needs nearly two inches of water per day during its active growth stages. In the past, farmers relied on flood irrigation but today most farms have adopted modern drip irrigation systems. In some areas, farmers also use sprinkler systems which mimic rainfall and can easily be moved to different sections of the field. Regardless of the method, efficient irrigation is vital for achieving strong Fertilization plays a major role. Sugarcane requires nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium to develop thick, juicy stems. Farmers use specialized machines that distribute liquid fertilizer evenly over hundreds of acres. By midsummer, the fields become vast green seas of sugarcane rustling gently in the wind. The sight is breathtaking, with thousands of acres moving as one each stalk storing sweet juice for the coming harvest. After about a year of growth, the sugarcane reaches its full height ready to be harvested. The stalks are thick and heavy filled with sweet sap that must be extracted quickly after cutting. In the past, farmers burned the dry leaves before harvesting to make cutting easier. The fire removed unnecessary foliage, exposing the canes and allowing faster work. However, due to environmental concerns and modern equipment, this practice is now heavily restricted.
Today's harvest is almost entirely mechanized. Modern sugarcane harvesters are engineering marvels. Each machine can cut up to 100 tons of cane per day. As they move through the field, spinning blades slice each stalk cleanly near the ground to capture the part richest in sugar. Internal fans remove the leaves which are spread back across the soil as organic fertilizer. The clean cane stalks are then chopped into smaller pieces and conveyed into large hoppers. These harvesters work in perfect rhythm with transport trucks that follow beside them collecting the chopped cane directly from the field. Once full, the trucks rush to the nearby sugar mills. Time is critical. Freshly cut sugar cane begins to lose sugar content after just a few hours. To maintain quality, the milling process begins the same day the cane is harvested. The trucks unload their cargo onto long conveyor belts leading to a powerful washing system that removes soil dust and debris from the stalks. Once cleaned, the canes are chopped into small pieces and crushed under massive rollers. The pressure squeezes out a thick, greenish juice rich in natural sugar. This raw juice is collected in large tanks while the fibrous leftover material called bagasse is set aside for reuse. Bagasse is far from waste. It serves as an important energy source for the factory fueling boilers that generate steam and electricity. The extracted juice still contains impurities, so it undergoes a clarification process. Lime is added to the juice, which causes unwanted solids to settle. The clarified liquid is then heated in large evaporators where water is gradually removed. Through several stages of evaporation, the liquid thickens into a golden syrup known as masacuit to form sugar crystals. Small grains of sugar are introduced into the concentrated syrup. These act as seeds, allowing larger crystals to grow as the mixture cools. The result is a dense mass containing both sugar crystals and molasses. The next step involves high-speed centrifuges machines that spin the mixture rapidly to separate the crystals from the syrup. The sugar collects on the sides while the darker molasses drains out. The separated sugar is then dried with hot air cooled and screened for uniform size. At this stage, it's called raw sugar and has a light brown color. To achieve the pure white sugar we're familiar with, the raw crystals are refined further. They're dissolved in hot water at around 80 degrees Celsius, filtered through layers of sand gravel and activated carbon to remove color and remaining impurities. Then crystallized again through careful cooling. The end result is the sparkling white sugar used in households, bakeries, and beverage industries. 
automatic packaging lines fill seal and label bags or sacks of sugar with remarkable speed and precision. Each batch undergoes strict quality testing to ensure it meets standards for sweetness color and purity before being shipped to markets across the country. Behind every ton of sugar produced are thousands of people, farmers, machine operators, scientists, and engineers, each contributing their expertise and effort. Farmers work tirelessly under the sun to cultivate and care for the crops. Technicians monitor every machine in the mills. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay with us on more incredible journeys through the heart of modern agriculture.